Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be trying something slightly different. What I'm going to do is give you a very quick overview of the Monster Hunter Collab in a couple of minutes. This will be to supplement a full-length video in case you have less time or just want to get kind of like the Spark Notes version. So, in essence, the Monster Hunter Collab is one of the best events in Puzzle and Dragons. That is because it has some of the strongest five-star cards available at the bottom rarity, so that means if you're chasing for higher rarity cards, you can roll a five-star and still be happy. Furthermore, this is also home to some of the best weapon assists in the game, and at this point in time, weapon assists are incredibly important because we are now able to resist or basically counteract dangerous mechanics just through awakenings. As such, having, say, 100% blind, poison, jammer, cloud, tape, etc. means you can ignore those mechanics. And Monster Hunter Collab, especially at the five-star level, has three cards that give 60% for either poison, jammer, or blind. So just rolling for those cards in themselves is valuable. Furthermore, for the most part, this event is quite strong in my opinion. It's got great value at the seven-star, which is expected, but it also has tremendous value at some of the five stars as well, so you won't be as disappointed. Furthermore, there are not too many five stars, so in theory you should be able to pick up things like Raytheon, Narc, uh, I can't pronounce the name, and Palomo with relative ease. But I want to just touch upon the other cards that were released or something that's notable. So, Velcana is one of the new seven stars, and they are a very powerful leader, they can be a very powerful sub, and they're also a great inherit. They have 4,000 base attack before plus eggs, which means their triple seven combo and VDP can deal spectacular amounts of damage, so great sub value. As a leader, they have 400 times attack, four times health, and potentially 57% damage reduction. But the damage reduction is only going to occur when you heal 100,000 health, and you don't have any RCV multiplier. So for the most part, that seems kind of hard to do. But thankfully, with cards like Mel or Mitsune, which is arguably a staple card for this team, you're able to easily heal that threshold much more with much less effort. By comparison, in theory, you could pair Beach, Barber, and Julie for two times RCV when matching Water and Fire, when you won't really necessarily compromise your matching style necessarily, so this can definitely be useful. Unfortunately, we do lack the more ideal pairings that JP has because we don't have all the collabs that they do, so they won't be as strong, but they're still quite powerful. In terms of their weapon assist, the Cloud and the Enhanced Heal Orb Awakening give them great utility. You put them on something like Air, who has tape resist for super awakenings, you have full immunity to tape and clouds, and even more healing for your healing stick. The next new 7 star card is Alatrion. And they have triple VDP with Super Awakenings and then a God and Devil Killer, which are arguably the best typings to have in endgame content because most of the most dangerous and endgame spawns are Devils or Gods. So with the triple VDP and one killer, you have 46.9 times damage and it goes to 140 times, which will kill everything if they're both God and Devil type and you match the 3x3. Three three. Furthermore, the weapon assist is 80% poison resist. But with that being said, we lack a truly spectacular home to really use them on. We don't have any premier fire leader at this point in time. Rao got buffed from Fist of the North Star, but in JP, which will most likely come to North America at some point, so it might give some value there, especially for the weapon assist where the enhanced fire orbs will actually pay off. But 80% poison just from one weapon is amazing because that, in conjunction with something else that has 20%, will provide full coverage. One place that I can foresee them being used on at least right now would be on Beach, Barbara, and Julie teams because they can use red cards. The red is going to be made quite often. You can VDP, bam, explosive damage. Other things I wanted to jump to is Akintor. So I felt like they were lackluster beforehand, but I found that their weapon assist has now become so incredibly powerful. And even though it may seem redundant because there's a five-star card in Monster Hunter with the same triple blind resist, having team health, having team RCV is incredibly important. It's going to make it so you're able to hit those health thresholds to naturally tank preemptives much more easily. You can also heal up more quickly at the same time. It just makes them the best blind weapon assist available in the game because you have those additional stats which you can't really acquire elsewhere. For example, my Phenom plus Ina team struggles to meet that Goemon's health preemptive if I don't utilize team health awakenings. I use it through my friend's weapon assist for the Jammer Skyfall buff, but the point of the matter is if I had this, I'd have an even larger margin to work around. Another thing I want to point out is the last new card introduced of Rajang, and they have a 500 times damage nuke to one enemy. 
That's outrageous because before we had 350 times. So it might open up new doors for buttoning harder and more difficult to kill spawns, but it's just a bigger button. Their leader skill gives a seven by six board with 14 times, is it no, 18 times eight attack if you hit 14 or more combos. So on a bigger board, more doable, but there's no defensive multipliers. You're quite vulnerable. All they do is damage. They have double 10 combo awakening, which means 25 times personal damage. So you will have big numbers. But the problem is, all it is is big numbers. There's no void damage penetration, so void spawns cancel out. They have no utility. Their active skill is dead weight in other types of content where you're not actually buttoning things because things that have millions upon millions of health won't actually be affected. But it's brand new and it's at the six star rarity, which means you have to actually roll it, which is probably their intent. You can't trade for it, you have to roll for it, so they're hoping you obviously roll more. Of course, whoops, let's go back here. The other top tier cards we're all kind of familiar with. We know Amatsu is massive health. Fatalis has one of the best weapon assists in the game. Brachydios is still an incredible devil killer. It's still an incredible button, but their weapon assist is able to add tremendous amounts of damage for mono light teams with the bonus 80% awakening along with the four enhanced light orbs. And then Raytheon and Narga, Narg, I can't pronounce their name, has 60% poison and 60% blind resist respectively. So they're just incredibly strong cards to have. So in conclusion, the Monster Hunter Collab is a very powerful event. It is home to some of the strongest weapon assists in the game. It's got great value at the top and bottom rarity. And if you have not rolled in this event beforehand, I strongly encourage you to do so now. At the same time, if you have only a few of these cards, you should be rolling for more because having duplicate Raytheons makes life easier because you can inherit them around more easily. And in all honesty, it's not bad to have more of these weapon assist resist cards. So let me know what you think about this format in the comments below. Is it helpful? Is it informative? Or should I just stick to the longer length videos? Hopefully all the fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling.